my name is Jessica and I'm from the Chesterfield Museum. I'm going to be telling you a little bit about our memory boxes. We have a wide range of memory boxes that cover a variety of topics and the box I'm going to show you today is all about the swinging 60s. Memories are so important and our memory boxes are a really great way of exploring the past. Looking at the objects in the boxes, they can really help people reminisce about the past and remember facts about their life. This can be a really great help for people who are living with dementia. Our memory boxes cover a wide range of topics and they can really help engage, support and share those special memories. Memories are so important because they help make us who we are. So I'm going to show you the first object now. The first item from this memory box that I'm going to show you is this Dandy comic. This comic is from September the 5th, 1964. And the front cover features Corky the Cat, who was a popular character in Dandy comics. Dandy was one of the most popular comics in the UK and at its height of popularity was selling over 2 million copies a week. The Dandy featured really famous characters such as Desperate Dan and Corky the Cat and these two characters actually featured on the very first issue of The Dandy. The Dandy was in circulation for a really long time from 1937 and only stopped fairly recently in 2012. And this comic says that it came out every Tuesday. Some people collected dandies and always got the new copy when it came out on the Tuesday. There was also the Beano comic, which was kind of similar to the dandy, and they were both published by DC Thompson in Dundee. Did you read the dandy? Did you have a favourite comic? Can you remember swapping comics with your friends? And who was your favourite character? Was it Desperate Dan or Corky the Cat? The next item from the memory box I would like to show you is this simplicity dress pattern. Many people in the 60s had a go at making their own clothes. This was a way to have something really unique and different that you couldn't get in stores. The 60s was a time of innovation in fashion, especially for women. Getting dress patterns was a really great way to express your individuality and get something that you really like. Designers like Mary Quant were creating really different styles and short skirts. So having a dress pattern like this could ensure that you kept up with fashion and got something really unique to wear. This yellow dress was handmade by somebody in the 60s and you can see the care and the detail that has been taken on the stitching and creating something really special to wear. The pattern of the fabric is this beautiful yellow and really striking and the shape of the dress is a typical 60s style. Twiggy was a huge icon in the 60s and impacted fashion and the way people wanted to dress. Here is an image of some more 60s fashion and you can see the really bold colours and patterns on these dresses. It could be quite exciting going to a large store such as John Lewis and looking at all the different fabrics on display and choosing the right colour and the right pattern for your next dress that you're going to make. Did you ever make any of your own dresses? Where did you go to buy your material? And can you remember taking dressmaking at school? The next item to show you is this Kodak Instamatic camera. Photography was quite a popular hobby in the 60s and a lot of people did have a camera such as this or a brownie that Kodak also made. The Instamatic camera in particular was actually released in 1963 by Kodak and became really popular. The Instamatic camera was really successful and between 1963 and 1970 over 50 million cameras were produced. Many other manufacturers of cameras brought out a similar kind of product to capitalise on this. Using a camera like this you would take snaps of family holidays or special occasions and because you couldn't get very many pictures on the film, you had to really consider each and every picture. When used outdoors in fairly bright conditions and not too close to the subject, you could actually get a really good photograph using a camera like this. Photographs were often called snaps and once you had finished the film, the spool would actually have to be taken to a pharmacist such as Boots where they would then develop the pictures and this could take up to a week or so. So the anticipation of waiting for your photographs to be developed 
could be quite exciting looking forward to what you'd actually taken the pictures of it could be quite expensive at the time so you may only have two spools from a holiday so it made each photograph all the more special did you have a camera similar to this one and can you remember waiting for the photographs to be developed of course this memory box all about the 60s had to have a tribute to the swinging 60s music scene. The next item is this 45 single record or a seven inch record. This type of record was really popular in the 60s and every Saturday, a lot of music lovers would go out and buy the newest singles. Bands like the Rolling Stones, the Beatles and artists like Elvis Presley and Cliff Richard were really, really big in the 60s and sold millions of copies of their records. This first record here is Jimmy Mac by Martha and the Vandellas. You can see it comes in this really nice purple sleeve. Sometimes the records could actually be different colours as well, but this one is just a black one. And you can see there is also another song on the other side. You can see on this record it was produced by Motown, which was a huge record label in the 60s and had a huge impact on popular music at the time. They produced a lot of really big bands music, such as The Supremes, The Jackson 5, Marvin Gaye and The Commodores. The next single is The Tremolos with Here Comes My Baby. This has also got another track on the other side. And this was a really big hit in the UK in the 60s when it was released. This final record here is by The Monkees, who were really big in the 60s. They also had a TV show named The Monkees that they starred in as well. Can you remember going to buy any singles? Who was your favourite band or performer? Do you have a favourite song from that time? This image is from the 1966 World Cup. Everybody is celebrating with huge smiles because England have just won the World Cup. This is the first and only time England ever, ever hosted or won the World Cup. The final match took place on Saturday the 30th of July 1966 and the match was England versus West Germany. Jeff Hurst, who wasn't even meant to be starting that game, actually scored a hat-trick, which is the only hat-trick scored in a World Cup final. The British television audience of this event was 32.3 million and remains the most watched television event ever. It did have its controversies, but the whole event is really well remembered. People often wish we could go back to when we won a World Cup. You can see how happy everybody is in the photograph and it's impacted Britain in a really positive way. Did you have a favourite member of the team? Can you remember watching the match? Where did you watch it? Were you at a friend's house? Were you at the pub? Did you actually go to the stadium? Did you and your family cluster around your television set to catch the winning goal? I would like to thank you for looking through this memory box with me and I would like to leave you with a famous quote from that 1966 World Cup final. They think it's all over. It is now.